All right. Welcome to Wife Faith. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello, Becca. How are you? We're doing great over here. How are you guys? Excellent. Just, we couldn't be better. Could not be better. Somebody asked me the other day how we were doing. I was like, we are surviving. We are not thriving, but we are surviving. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I mean, you really shouldn't ask more than that. You know. <laughs> Um, so we've got a lot of topics today, um, on podcasts. Why don't you go ahead and break the news of the headline with our crypto friend. Okay, and well, we'll start there. Stay in the know of everything. Um, Me. I just got Up a little notification that the FTX cryptocurrency guy, Sam Bankman Freed, um, he had been convicted last year at some point, um, for oh, yeah. wire fraud and a couple of other things. Um, but he was just given a sentence of 25 years. So, uh, and as I was Randy telling mentioned earlier, he was asking yeah. for some leniency because of his diet that he needs yeah. while he's serving his time. Apparently, our wisdom for you guys, if you commit a crime and you're looking at some jail time, go ahead and tell them you're vegan. Um, it's it's going to get you some time off. Yeah. If you think you've got something that'll work for you, shoot your shot. <laughs> I mean, but I would also imagine he's probably not going to like the penitentiary. He's probably going to one of those no. fancier prisons. Where yeah. Really? You just probably, like in the garden. So maybe yeah, they like, can accommodate him. He's probably better off there than out in the world anyways. So, I mean, I don't think he's going um, to prison. <laughs> no, no. Um, other breaking news. Um, it appears that Taylor Swift has changed her Spotify profile picture today about two hours ago. Um, to the TTPD. Um, which, by the way, I saw a tweet yesterday where someone was asking, when you're talking about the Tortured Poets Department album, do you call it TTPD or do you say that as a word? And I was like, what would that word be? Like, tipidip? Like, <laughs> but now that I just said that out loud, I'm wondering if they meant, do you say the Tortured Poets Department or do you say TTPD? That's not how they now, it. Yeah, I don't feel stupid. They should feel stupid. That's what's happening. It's not a me problem. Um, Here's what I appreciate about this. Okay. He changes her picture to the TTPD picture. It's not mm -hmm. an Easter egg. It's just her being it's excited. It's just coming out. It's literally something just happening. Thank I don't God. know if down a rabbit hole for this. Yeah. Um, or will we? I don't no. know. So... I'm about to tell you why I think it could be an Easter egg. <laughs> but it talks about that subject, but I do think that there could be some correlation. So there's been all these questions I've seen where people are like, why is she not doing any promo for TTPD, blah, blah, it's coming out, why is she not, whatever. Which I have even said to you, I really hope that she does some talk shows. I don't think she's going to, especially because yeah. Jimmy Fallon's on vacation. And so I don't think she's going to, but here was the theory behind it was that she was not doing any promo ahead of Beyonce's album coming out tonight at midnight to let Beyonce have her moment. And the theory was because people are still hoping that she's on the album. So more and more is leaking today because I guess it's probably midnight somewhere. And so they've already they've already seen the Beyonce album or something. And so because the list of collaborators is coming out and Taylor's not on it, at least yet. I, I don't think she's going to be, but um, so now people are saying, well, she went ahead and changed her profile picture because like she doesn't want people clowning, wondering if she's on the album and just letting it focus on Beyonce. I think that's a bit as far. I mean, you know, I can go down a rabbit hole, but that that one feels dumb to me. I think it's just like, oh. a theory for everything. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think it's just time. But it sounds like it looks like Miley Cyrus, Post Malone. Willie yeah. Nelson. Oh, I um, the Willie Nelson one. Well, that's, that's just, and of course, this is a little speculative of us. So we are, um, you know, kind of going to that. Um, but I do have some breaking news about the album that just came out an hour ago. And I don't know if you've heard this yet. So if you've seen any of the, like, promos of it, I get very confused because I don't think I also realize that this is like a three-part thing like renaissance was the first album this is the second one and then there's a third one. Oh, i didn't realize that i didn't know that either 
again, these people, they really have a lot of time on their hands. They really do. Um, great teams. <laughs> but have you seen in the promo pictures Beyonce on the white horse? Yes. Here's your golden nugget today. Did you know? And you didn't because you, trust me, I know you didn't know this. Um, apparently the song that Miley Cyrus is allegedly on with Beyonce on the album, again, a little speculative for us, but it's called, I don't know if it's called like one, one most wanted. It looks like line line, like it could be Roman numerals. Yeah. Could, I don't know. Anyway, most wanted is the second part. Anyway, allegedly Miley's on that song. It was allegedly again, recorded in 2019. Around the time that Liam Hemsworth reportedly stole Miley Cyrus's horses during their whole divorce, including her horse named Blue Jeans, which so happens to be the horse that Beyonce is photographed on. Okay. Okay. How about them nuggets? There you go. Bet you didn't know you were getting that today. First off. Hasn't it? It's been confirmed that Miley's on a song, right? Like that's not speculation. That's been confirmed, right? I, I mean, as much as as much as without coming out of Beyonce's mouth, yeah. Okay, but also in 2019, you were already recording. See, and here again, time zones don't make sense, and the timeline of making a record does not make sense to me. So long ago to make a song that you're going to put on an album like four years later and think it's still going to fit the vibe of what you're going for. But again, I don't know how long it takes to like mix it and produce it and prep all of the Listen, like, material to send out. I mean, it's like these vault tracks that are on Taylor's albums, like the ones that just came out on 1989. Like it blows my mind that she wrote those like 10 years 10 plus years ago and they're yeah. like good now like i don't even yeah, that's true so i will say um so here's the thing i like beyonce like mm -hmm. i'm not an anti-beyonce person i am not a like listen to beyonce on repeat person no i'm just i'm just not um i like her fine but one thing that i noticed and it is also rumored about the song that she's on with miley Something that I don't like about Beyonce is that she, and I don't know if I pronounced this word correctly, but it comes up a lot that inter, interpolate, interpolates, where they like. That feels good. Let's go play. with that. It, it, it could sound good. <laughs> where they like, you know, play on a song from something else. So apparently the song that she's on with Miley, she interpolates the song Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Um, I'll have to which is a great song. how I feel about that. I, it's a great song, but I'm like, what? How do this connect to Beyonce? And then we're going to throw Miley Cyrus in the mix. I don't like when people do a lot of interpolating. I feel yeah. like it's like unoriginal. I mean, it f almost feels like you took the easier way out. Yeah. To do that. Also, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't love. Miley has a very unique voice. And I don't mm -hmm. love her tries to sing someone else's style of music because I feel like she tries to change her voice up so much so that it just sounds even less like her normal voice. So it's always weird. It's hit or miss with her songs, I feel. You know, Miley is Miley is hit or miss for me. Listen, Flowers is a great song. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I loved Party in the USA in the moment. Now I don't like to hear it now because I feel like I've heard it too much, but yeah. Um, I don't love her the way every uh, seems like other people do. Like I saw yesterday where Zayn Malik was saying how he would love to um, collaborate with her. I can't even imagine their voices together because I think of like his song, I Don't Want to Live Forever, the one he did with Taylor. And like their voices were so good. And I'm like, Miley is just so distinct that and it's very hard. Know. It's not yeah. it seem to harmonize super well. Mm -mm. Yeah, that would be interesting. We'll see. It's also rumored that Posty, Post Malone is on here. Yeah. Um, I think that is confirmed. Again, not from Beyonce's mouth, but I think that's confirmed. Yeah. But little nugget of wisdom. I'm just dropping all kinds of things for you today. Did you oh, know? In the notes. 
that Posty is he joins Kendrick Lamar, Ed Sheeran, and Future as the only three artists to collaborate with Beyonce and Taylor. Okay, man, now that's have- to add to your resume. I put that at the top. That would be my first bullet point. It definitely would be. I would probably open every conversation with someone. Like, hi, I'm Chris <laughs> Malone, and I've also sung songs with Taylor Swift <laughs> and Beyonce. And Beyonce. I'm pretty much I'm probably be like, oh, I was just delivering your mail. Like, but yeah. thank you for that. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think those are probably my main points of wisdom for, or not just the wisdom that I have for the day. Um, you brought a lot. Yeah, thank you. So we're going to be all over the place as usual today. That seems to be our new thing. Seems like you folks like that. And it just continues our daily conversation. So we're fine with it. Um, I'm going to kick us off with, let's talk a little bit about Diddy. Um, also known as Sean Combs. Also known as Puffy. Also known as Puff Daddy. I think that's all that also known as. Um, he's in a little bit of trouble. Um well, I mean, again, we're a little bit speculative. Nothing's been confirmed. Right. <laughs> Everything's just uh, valid as far. No charges have been made, no arrests right. have been made. Except right. for so, the drug guy yeah. on his plane. That yeah, which, I mean, that'll get you every time, really. So <laughs> it appears this week that Diddy's homes in California and Miami were raided by not even the FBI by Homeland Security, which is not a good start to the story. Just if you don't, if you're not familiar with the way the legal system works, that's not a great start. Right. Like, that's like top tier. Yeah. Like you're going to wish you had the FBI at that point. Yeah. Um, and they came in guns a blazing, like full out combat tactical gear. I don't know what they thought they were coming up on. Like, okay. So I saw something about this. There was a um, former FBI agent that. Mm-hmm. TikTok as one does. Um, because very so informative. Like, They're like, why was it such excessive force breaking down his gates and all that? Apparently, yeah. it was a known fact that he had weapons um, mm-hmm. um per whatever information they had. Um, and so that is their protocol is you have to be prepared for if there are weapons in the home that they could be used. So you have to go in as a surprise and you have to get in by whatever means necessary. So apparently that potentially could be the reason it seemed so excessive. Okay, and also, I mean, I could see that. We saw his two sons were detained in handcuffs. And that, mm-hmm. again, was because potentially there were weapons on site. So they had to keep them detained. They were not arrested. There were no charges against them. They were just detaining them while they were searching the house. So. Which I mean, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, So if you haven't heard, um, he is, I guess you could say, I guess you would say he's being accused or I don't, anyway. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. About some sexual trafficking, sex trafficking. Um, Which that was not by Homeland Security. Is that was the yeah, uh, and it sounds like they've got was it three or four Jane Does and at least one John Doe who have um, made their like statements on the record to the big dog, which that isn't right. a good sign either. Um, there were drugs found and there were weapons found. His guy that's known as his drug mule, which is a little scrawny white dude who used to play basketball at Syracuse, which I don't know how he, how he ended up in Diddy's world. I'll never know, but he was arrested. Um, We don't quite know where Mr. Diddy is. Um, I think, didn't we know he find out he was in Miami? Well, we knew he was in Miami, but I mean, is he still? Because he was, he was at, the airport when the drug person got arrested on his plane. Um, I don't know if he's still there. Maybe he's gone to his LA house. I'm not sure. But at some point this week, he was in Miami. So my, I seem distracted because my Twitter just went off and it's about Scooter Braun. We cannot. Let me finish the ditty and then we're going to have to go to this, which is breaking <laughs> news, people. Like, this is just. What a day. Wild. Um, 
So apparently there's like rumors, and this may even have been confirmed by Homeland too, that um, there were recordings throughout Diddy's home of everything that happened. I know Mr. 50 Cent is very in the mix of this because he apparently hates Diddy and his ex-girlfriend is apparently one of the accused in the paperwork along with Prince Harry. Mother of his child. I mean, yeah, like people going down left and right. Um, So who knows how this will play out, but it it doesn't look good. I think, and of course I was never really in the rap world, which might surprise you a little bit. Um, but I've been here for for years and I've always known 50 Cent was not his biggest fan. People have kind of made comments here and there, um, in various news outlets about Diddy. Apparently a lot of people in the rap community have all made comments years ago about different, never specifically saying what it was, but just, it was kind of dark and there were things that, you know, they couldn't unsee. Um, I don't know that anyone thought it potentially went as deep as what this looks like it went. So, yeah, I've heard the rumors over the years that like, well, back then when Puffy would have a party, there were a lot of people who would purposely not go. Yeah. Um, I never really knew why. Um, I just figured because, and again, listen, I am not on the up and up of my rap history. Um, I do love Tupac and Biggie. um, So I feel like I should be more educated, but I'm not. But there is some connection to Biggie's murder to Diddy. Yes. I've heard rumors of that. Yeah. Listen, who knows what they're going to find. If there's so much video proof like they're saying that there is, it would lead you to believe that it's not just videos from the last few years. Potentially, maybe that was his thing. He liked to have everything recorded, which honestly, a lot of artists record a lot of things in their lives because you never know when a documentary is going to be made. However, I don't think that he was videoing for a documentary, but I think he had a lot of stuff going on. Are you there? I feel like we lost you. Too much breaking news. Listen, are you there? There we go. I know the wind blew, so we lost the internet for a minute. Um, I don't know what the last thing you heard was, but I was saying that I thought people didn't go to the parties because of the whatever connection there was to Biggie's murder. Oh, okay. So I don't I guess know I that we had new and I could have that mixed up. There's something there, but yeah, I always knew it was like you, you either were in with Diddy or you weren't. Um, so I don't know if this could be could be big. There's lots of rumors. Jay Z, Bieber, lots of people. Right. And like um, I told you, it's interesting to me um, to see is he the only one that goes down for all of this? Is he going to be the fall guy for everything? Will people make plea deals and then testify against him? So well, it'll be interesting. That. Yeah, how much this plays out. Well, because Cassie had just done a huge lawsuit against him and Mm -hmm. it came out and it came out in detail. He denied it. And the very next day he settled. So, yeah. Well, I I feel like I feel like he's nervous about this because I guess you probably saw that he like sold all his shares in what's it called? Revolts or whatever. Um, And I didn't realize he'd already been kind of kicked out of like Chirac or whatever it's called, his vodka. Um, and like a lot of his other businesses, he's already so like, is out. he was he still making music? I don't guess I knew he had been putting stuff up. Uh, the reason I ask is he's making money somehow because that house was gorgeous. Oh, that was just one of them. So too. I was like, my man was doing well. Now wait a minute, didn't we just didn't they just honor Biddy at the VMAs? Did they? Wasn't that the one that like Taylor was at dancing in that black dress with her hair all weird around her ears? And they gave him like a lifetime achievement award, maybe like maybe Nicki Minaj gave it to him. 
am I making all this up? I Listen, mean, y'all, y'all are in the real time with this right now. Oh, it says Diddy performed career spanning medley at the 2023 MTV VMAs. Yeah. Diddy did the Global Icon Award. That's not aging well. Not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. Um, probably going to have to ask for that back. It may be in the <laughs> boxes that Homeland took. I don't know. Um, Asterisk that on the website. <laughs> ooh, yeah. Well, I mean, Gosh. yikes. Um, well, tying to all this, there are rumors that, um, and again, I'm really good with pronouncing names. So I'm going to go with Lucien Grange, that was the head of the music. Nailed that. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Thank you. Um, I didn't even practice that. Um, anyway, okay. he allegedly is now being accused of like, grooming Bieber and like letting people do some not nice things to him when he was a little kid. Yeah. And if you're not yeah. familiar with that name, his son is Elliot Granger Grange and he is married to Sophia Ritchie. So thank good people. All of these people are like, it's yeah. This doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. Um well, speaking of Bieber, I can make this transition to my breaking Scooter Braun news, which okay. um, if you're not familiar with the name Scooter Braun, count your blessings. Um, Laura, this is for you. Let us go ahead and explain this part for you. Scooter used to be the manager of a lot of people, um, but he's yeah. also the first person to buy Taylor Swift's um, albums. Masters. Masters. I was trying to say, Matt. Ah, Lee, I am a struggle test today. Anyway. <laughs> Um, and it was very, thank you, thank you. It was very well known that Taylor did not want her masters going to Scooter because he's a bad word. And um, they did anyway. And so, but anyway, since then, Scooter has really had a fall from grace too. He's lost all of his clients, his wife. I mean, he's, because he's a not good person. Yeah. But I just got some breaking news here that Universal Music Group, UMG, has expanded its relationship with I'm going to go with five H Y B E. Um, and here's the problem with that. A couple problems. Hive CEO is Scooter Braun. Universal Music Group. Taylor and everyone. Oh, um, so UMG has expanded its relationship with five to include the exclusive digital and physical distribution rights to the company's artists for the next 10 years. So if you're not watching this and you're just listening to us, we are a little bit stunned because this is, I mean, I don't know. So when it comes to Taylor, I am not sure how this works because she actually, again, I don't really know how this works, but, She's with Republic Records, which is the right. same thing that like Post Malone and a lot of people are with. I think the way it works is that falls under the UMG umbrella. Okay. The reason I say that is there is still some connection between whatever Taylor's with and UMG because UMG is the one that just removed all their artists from TikTok. And Taylor got removed from TikTok, her music being used by other people through UMG. So there is some connection. Um, now, I don't know. I am, I am like floored by this because so. Uh, I was I don't surprised know. that any business is still doing business with Scooter, especially with how much backlash he got in the media from Taylor and all of the Swifties. And that's a huge hit, even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, like any company. Well, yeah. Like, I don't I mean, think I want to play game with him. And yeah, even if you don't, even just the Taylor thing aside, like he lost Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, Justin Bieber, Jay Balvin, like he lost all of them. This is saying that he's going to, he is a CEO of Hybe America, but that he will take, just says, we'll take on new responsibilities with the new agreement. But it says that he will now oversee all promotional and marketing collaborations between Hive and, UN and UMG in North America. 
I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out. I feel like we're going to have to. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. We're going to have to dig more into this and we'll get back to you on this. There's people that are saying that it may not affect her because however this works, she's a part of the Republic artist. Yeah. So I, it may not affect her, but I could see her still being like, mm, it's time for me to do my own. Because people of yours have said, have said she was going to have her own label, which I'm kind of shocked hasn't happened yet. I firmly yeah. believe it's going to be called Summit because I think that's why in Karma, she says, I take all my friends to the summit. Just saying. What you know saying. what? I think she would bring all her friends over to her. Own oh, microphone. can you imagine? Listen. The anyway, we'll get back to you on that. That tells me. I mean, legit. We, uh, I don't, we'll get back to you about this because, it, again, this was like breaking news. It, it is from a confirmed source. It's not from like one of the hearsay things on Twitter. So we'll see. Yeah. I probably better turn this over because there is no telling what else is going to happen during this show. It's been a busy news. All right. Week. So Diddy's going to jail. Maybe we got that. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's again, see. we don't speculate. <laughs> no. Uh, but speaking of Diddy, um, J Lo. Yeah. Who, Again, if you didn't know, Laura, um, J Lo used to be with Diddy. Oh, a long, long time ago, but for a while. Um, yeah. Would you like to explain what's happening to our friend J Lo? So I think we briefly touched on her last week. Um, just the fact she had released a movie. I'm not really sure what we call it. Then she released a documentary of behind the scenes of making that. Um, mm -hmm. And then she had a tour planned out. Um, she's got a lot of heat and not heat. She's gotten a lot of criticism from the movie and the documentary, just very unrelatable, not great. Um, and then the tour dates have started to get canceled because she can't sell tickets, which has to be a massive hit to someone's ego when they've lived in their own bubble for so long to realize, wait, is something happening? Do, do people not like me? What's wrong? I'm getting from the block. Like, what? <laughs> I just, yeah. And if you're on TikTok, if you're on the JLo side of TikTok, which thankfully my algorithm has gotten me there, <laughs> it is thankfully. wild. Like, and you never know, like, who's telling the truth and who's just making something up. Right. But the amount of people that have come out and been like, oh, I went to school with her. This was not, we didn't go to the block. Like we had a gorgeous school. Um, mm -hmm. The amount of people that have like seen her at red carpet events or interacted with her in some way and just how she potentially treats people that are as she possibly sees them beneath her. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you kind of have always gotten that vibe from her that she's oh, yeah. seen her band. There was the video clip of her spitting her gum into her assistant's hand. Mm -hmm. There's just Bless some her. things that I want to be like, if, especially if you're a mom, yeah, you can't take care of things yourself. Like, I just can't even fathom being in a world where I'm like, do I go to the trash can to my left? Or do I spit <laughs> into another human's hands? Or, or, like, swallow what? it or something. Like, yeah, I just, you know. yeah, I mean, I've never gotten the vibe when I've like watched anything with JLo where I thought, oh, if I ran into her in Kroger, I would totally go up to her and say hi. Yeah, no. Like, never happened. Is she gorgeous? Yes. Yeah. Stunning. Is she talented? No. Um, I mean, she can dance, but she is not a great actress. She is a terrible well, singer. But then you see the clips of her in the movie, and you're like, maybe she can dance, but she can't choreograph. Maybe oh, no, no, no. She's, yeah, she's good at being told, like, this is how you do it. And yeah. I mean, it's like Taylor. Taylor herself says she's a bad dancer, and she is. When you notice her doing her own thing, she's chaotic. <laughs> But she, she can learn. Like, yeah, she can learn. Um, yeah, I don't know. J Lo, we talk about it all the time that poor Ben Affleck just looks miserable when he's with her. Yet when he's with his ex-wife Jennifer Garner, he looks like he's on top of the world. So, but you also have to wonder. Here's the thing: Ben was engaged to her before they dated. I mean, he knew years. what he was getting. Yeah, exactly. That's my thing. Like, you knew what you were getting, so. You can't be too miserable if you went right back to it. And not only went back to it, but we're like, now's when I want to marry you. This yeah. Is now I'm gonna go to Vegas with you and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up. 
I um I don't know. I you know, I'm in my concert era. Um yes. I'm not going to see J Lo, nor did it ever cross my mind. So which to be fair, seemingly no one is. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I want to be where the people are. <laughs> And not in a JLo no. concert, but you know, no. um, I would love to be in a room with her and just ask her without any of her people around and just yeah. ask her, like, how did the perception now of the criticism right. and all of that that's come out? Like, does she wish that she had done anything differently, or does she think everybody else just doesn't get it? Like, well, just in here, where your mind really is, and here's the thing, too. We uh, to tie back to our beginning conversation, we don't know how far back and how widespread this Diddy thing is going to go. Yeah, our girl's not real popular at this point anyway. So if somehow she's tied to any of this, or there's she, listen, yeah. because here's what I'm back to sort of the Diddy thing, but also talking about J Lo and all these people who have made comments for years. Like if he was, if there were, if you thought for a second he was doing things like this. I think somehow you guys are liable for not turning him in. And I also wonder, was he such a big deal and had his hand in so many businesses with so many of the important people that people were afraid to say anything because then they knew their own livelihood would be gone, which not saying that that makes it right to not report it, but it makes it understandable. Like, you well, know I, mean? I feel like here's the thing. When it comes to famous people, I mean, as much as I want to think that some of these people get where they are based on talent, being good people, whatever. Sure, I wish that. I don't believe it for a second. No. I think that in every single one of these people's closets, there's some skeletons. And, you know, I think that about Taylor. I mean... I don't think they're anywhere near the Diddy thing, but I just think life happens. I mean, there's there's skeletons in my closet. I've never killed anyone, but I mean, yeah. I just think everybody but has something. Wonder, like now that this is starting to come out, are will it clean up the music industry? Do you think people will start to kind of like start minding their p's and q's a little bit more, making thinking a little bit more before they do something crazy? or blackmail anybody or try and hold something over somebody else's head? Or do you think that they'll just be like, well, he took the fall for it and the rest of us are good to go moving forward? Well, there's some word for it. Um, I don't remember what, I can't think of what the word is, but basically that whole, like, it's kind of like a, a delusional state when you like think you're like too big to get caught kind of thing. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, I think yeah. there's a word for it, but, Diddy seems like someone to me that would definitely fall in that trap of thinking like, I'm too rich. I'm too famous. I'm too powerful. I'm never going to go down. And like they lose their sight of like, Hey, this is wrong or there could be consequences. And so they kind of just kind of wild out. But it's still wild to me that like, if I'm doing something that you have to know, whatever he was doing, he knew was wrong. Then I mean, the people the that, around, that we've heard, surely you thought it was wrong. Big. You yeah. would think then the people that are around me that have seen me do these things, maybe I don't treat them like crap because I don't want them to turn on me. But it yeah. all, they just seem so delusional in this, like, I'll never get caught. No one's ever going to say anything against me. And now your entire, not only is your entire world crashing in, but potentially your entire family is going to go down for this. All of your associates, like. Well, it, and I think that tying back to the thing about Biggie, uh, and again, I don't have my rap history complete on this, but I do think that there were rumors, there have always been rumors that Diddy was somehow, when they had all that like West Coast, East Coast rap wars that were also tied yes. into like the gang wars between LA and New York, Diddy's name was kind of always thrown into that mix um, as well. And so in the grand scheme of things, this may have been par for the course with his compadres, you know? Um, I don't know. I just think, I, you know, when tying it back to JLo, I guess she's kind of always given me that vibe. Like she's, she's done some stuff. She knows some things, you know, so. I, I mean, don't know. it does make me wonder before people hit it big, like what devils did they make deals with? Well, and you know, a lot of people believe that you don't get to the fame that some of these people have gotten without doing that. 
I mean, right. I don't know. There could be a lot of truth to that, but I don't know. Um, speaking of kind of throwing people under the bus, so to speak, I don't even know if I want to say it like that, but um, let's talk about Rebel Wilson. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Rebel Wilson, and we do clarify every time because we do know we have at least one listener who is not always on the up with pop culture. Um, we God. trust that the rest of you probably are a little more. But, um, Rebel Wilson is an actress. Um, I think technically she's considered a singer too. Um, I guess right. I better mean, for as being an actress. She's uh, she's in Pitch Perfect. I feel like. Well, maybe you're not considered a singer, just a good actress. But um, I would even say she's a good actress. I don't want to get carried away. Anyway, uh, Rebel has she has a memoir coming out, as you do when you're famous. Um, and apparently she spilled the tea on a lot of things. Um, one of the things that she discusses is she discusses losing her virginity at age 35, which a lot of people were a little... I don't know if they were more shocked that she admitted that or the age. I don't know. There was a whole lot to that, but she said she did it to help um, late bloomers feel okay with themselves. I don't know. But she also um, kind of comes at, if you will, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. Baron Cohen. You're with me. Um, Again, if you're not familiar, he's an actor. Comedian. I don't really know what you call him. He's a weirdo. He asked me. Borat is probably what he's known best for. Yeah. So apparently he was a real jack wagon to her back in the day. Yeah. I'm again, I'm not surprised by anything with that. Um he apparently humiliated her on set of a film that they did together um back in 2016 which i didn't see the brothers grimms I, I don't know that i've ever i didn't see borat because like that stuff is not interesting no. to me at all no um but anyway apparently he humiliated her like in a really graphic way and i guess he caught wind that it was going to be in her memoir and so his people started threatening her people and so she just came out ahead of it and was like screw you you can threaten me all day i don't care this is who it is and the Put crazy thing, in her memoir, she does not name him. She right. alludes to who it potentially could be from what we've heard, but she doesn't name him. So if he had just stayed quiet, yeah, this probably would have blown over and no one would have ever thought twice about it. Yeah. But when you make it I, a huge deal, now people are like coming at you. And you know, here's the interesting thing too. So I read a book this month. Um a memoir it was rupaul's memoir um and i was just kind of curious to see like what the story would be and it's actually an interesting book um i'm sure but like is that just the thing like oh i'm famous now it's time for me to write a memoir like because there's a lot of people rebel wilson would fall in this category where i'm like yeah you're famous but do we really need a memoir like I'm sure they get so many offers to do that. There's probably so many publishing companies that want to, that eventually I'm sure you get into the mindset of, well, eventually I'll have to write one. So maybe that's what it is. But then there's the people that you really want to write a memoir that you know never are going to. And we all know who I'm talking about, but you know, it's never going to happen. And God would kill for that. (laughs) Man, that would stay. Um, the number one for years. <laughs> like him. It would beat the Bible for the rest of history, I'm telling you. Easily. Um, well, oh. since we're on the tangent of scandals, let's go ahead and stick with another one because we are not without them this week. Um, Nickelodeon in, in the spotlight. Now, did y'all, y'all were, we have similar upbringings, but y'all were definitely, I think, more sheltered than I was. Did y'all watch Nickelodeon? Listen, I appreciate that you understood that <laughs> this was probably not going to be up my alley. <laughs> we were not allowed to watch such sinful okay. shows. <laughs> okay. So I, mean, I couldn't watch shows like Roseanne and things like that, but I just had this feeling these girls have never seen this. Yeah. I remember um, being able to watch Saved by the Bell one weekend, and that was like a huge deal. So we definitely a little scandalous. Um, well, 
then perhaps I should explain to your sister if she's listening that there's a network called Nickelodeon. <laughs> no, so there is a new documentary because again, you either write a memoir or you make a documentary or both. Like that's just what you do. Um, there's a new documentary out on Discovery called Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which I think like if you if you followed any sort of pop culture, really, you just don't have your head in the sand. You've always heard that these child actors and actresses, I mean, they, they've been through the gamut. When you hear stories about like Drew Barrymore, Brooke Shields, all those people that like started when they were really young, it's, it's never pretty. Never. Yeah. Um, so there's this new thing out and it's talking all about the, all the former child actors alleging like a variety of a lot of different kinds of abuses and toxic behavior on the sets of a lot of the really popular shows on Nickelodeon back in the day. Um, all that, which I have heard of. I don't, I, I think that a lot of these were like, I was a little too old for them. But there was one called the Amanda show that's in the documentary, which is my name. And I've never heard of that. Oh, Amanda Bynes show. I had heard of it. I never oh, watched you, it. I know you have a special place in your heart for her. I didn't even know that's who it was. Um, yeah. But her show, uh, Drake and Josh, which I have heard of and seen, um, and Victorious, which I have heard of and seen. Um, and it, they kind of, the claims kind of go from racism, bullying, um, there's alleged sexual assaults, um, just a lot of like no bueno things. And there are, there are people that were on these shows that are in the documentary. And then there are people who were on those shows and some other Nickelodeon shows who've come out and either publicly made a statement like, um, condemning the uh, the actions of the people that were in charge or just kind of quietly doing stuff. Um, the show I Carly, the brother on that show, and then the, like the main guy character too, yeah. have like unfollowed everything of Nickelodeon. It's kind of like their silent support. Yeah. Um, again, Which I'm not really funny. surprised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because here's the thing, like, you know, if some of these rumors are true, especially like when you talk about sexual assault and stuff, if any of that stuff may have happened to them, they may not be ready to talk about it, you know? Well, so like, I think we have two sides to that. First off, we yeah. can't require everyone to come out and make a statement on every single thing. Because like you said, yep. if they were a victim of it and they're not ready to speak on that, then by all means, we should not be pushing them on that. Or if they just were never around and they didn't see any of it, again, they can be supportive of people but don't want to speak on it because they don't have any knowledge of it. So I think that right people be well, very and too, that's You know, and too, just because you're on the same network doesn't mean the same, you, you didn't have the same producers and directors, doesn't mean the same thing happened on every Nickelodeon show. Now, kind of the big brouhaha, I guess if there is one, with Drake and Josh, and of course I'm going to get their names wrong, but I think it's Drake Bell is the one in the documentary from the show. And he makes a lot of these allegations. Well, his co-star is Josh Pett, who yes. is not in the documentary and had not commented at all on anything. But he has since come out. I wouldn't say that he confirmed the allegations more so just confirming his support for Drake and others that were that had that experience. Um I don't know. Again, I'm never surprised, sadly. I mean, it's a sad statement to make, but I'm never surprised when I hear this stuff is happening because it's a messed up world. Like, I mean. Yeah. And I also think back just, in the 90s, people probably had a lot more trust in people in the industry and thought you're the mm -hmm. one that knows this world and you know what my kid needs to do. And so I'm sure there was a lot of parents just trusting that when they sent their kid off to work for the day yeah. that they were being taken care of. And kids well, were so young that they probably didn't think to speak on it then or didn't want to say anything because they themselves didn't process or know what was really happening at that time. Well, and I mean, I think at the end of the day, too, a lot of people, I mean, this was their dream. They yeah. they were scared to sacrifice what could be the dream. I mean, it ties back to the Diddy stuff with the allegations about Bieber. There's allegations that Usher even had comments made, that he had made about how he felt uncomfortable as a kid at Diddy's house. So it's just a it's a twisted world for sure but it'll be interesting to see like if there is fallout and you know kind of what happens but 
the main guy that is like accused in the documentary as best I can tell is not really involved in a lot of entertainment stuff anymore. He's a creepy old dude now. So it doesn't mean he shouldn't be held responsible if, you know, something did happen, but I don't know. Got to watch your children these days and back then. It's interesting. Um, let's see. Let's go to, let's, we'll go to the Royal family. So since our last episode, when we were very curious, a couple of episodes where Kate Middleton was, we now know. Um, yeah, she made a statement, gosh, probably right after we filmed our last episode. <laughs> it was Wait a second. Second. Um, that she does have cancer and she is undergoing what is called preventative chemotherapy. Have you done any research on that? You know, I want to say that I had Googled it some. But I think because there was a lot of doctors that came out and they're like, that's not a thing. This isn't real. Yeah. But I think that they were using their medical terms and she was explaining it from her own understanding as a lay person saying that's kind of they, like there, they found cancer. They tried to take it out. Yeah. Or they and then which would imply it's in the lymph node. So preventative chemo in my mind would have been we're preventing it from spreading we're trying to stop it and end yeah. it here so that's the way i took it i did think the term was weird that it was something i hadn't heard before but i also kind of took it as maybe they do things a little different in the uk than we do here i took it to like you hear about all the time when people have surgery to have tumors removed they still end up a lot of times having chemo or radiation that's kind of the way i took it i didn't find it that weird i guess but um so that happened and um, which is so crazy. Her, King Charles and Sarah Ferguson, all three at the same time. Like, yeah. Eesh, and here's I don't know the thing. I know that as soon as she made the announcement that she had cancer, everybody on the internet's like, don't you feel bad that you forced her? Da, da, da. She was going to come out and tell people. I don't think this is yeah. something that she was going to keep hidden the entire time. It's not something she could have because of the extensive time that she needs to be out of royal yeah. duties. However, I think had she come out and they made this statement early on, people would have mm -hmm. left them alone. You wouldn't have had the drama with the picture. You wouldn't have had the drama with the farmer's market. Because when King Charles comes out and says he has cancer, people have left him alone. Yep. So when you say you've got a princess who the public is paying for, and she's going to mm -hmm. be out of duty for all of these months, in some sense, the people are owed an explanation and it stinks because that is her personal life and there are young children involved. And I get that. And as parents, that's got to be hard to explain and try and shield your kids from. But at the same time, I feel like you could have prevented all of these theories and everything that have come out, the affair allegations that have been made so huge. I feel like that did more damage to the kids than if you had just been honest. But yeah, I agree. So yeah, two of the notes that I wanted to point out were, well, I guess three. I, same same with me. I thought that, I mean, did I feel bad when the news came out? I didn't feel bad that I wondered where she had been. Um, right. And I also, what I, I feel bad for her and their family, for sure. Like, I would anyone that has cancer. Um, right. I felt bad, honestly, like Blake Lively, which, you know, I'm a Blake Lively stan. Um, yeah. I adore Blake Lively. Um, I also think she is probably, well, this is my opinion. I know there are rumors otherwise, but I feel like she's a very genuine person and a very caring person, um, especially towards, yeah. And especially towards the people in her life. Um, she had made a post about Betty Buzz, her comp, one of her companies. Um, and in it, this was before the news came out, obviously she had like, it was a picture of her and she had made a joke like, no, this hasn't been photoshopped or whatever after all the jokes about the pictures with Kate Middleton. Well, so once the news came out, Blake made a statement that she felt terrible about what had, um, you know, the, the, the joke she had made and then the news right. had broke. I felt bad for Blake that she felt like she had to do that. Stephen Colbert did the same thing. Now, what I, I will say, you did not owe anyone an apology for being curious <laughs> and yeah, I didn't think Blake did at all. I mean, listen, photoshopping jokes have been around for centuries, but well, not yeah. centuries, but decades. 
Now, Stephen Colbert did apologize on his show too. Now, it, but it, it, again, it's different. Like all comedians hammer down on points sometimes and it can be a little uncomfortable. And he did that on his show and he came out and said that he never like revels in the tragedy of someone else. He, I mean, I, I thought it was fine that he apologized, but like, oh, you're a comedian, dude. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought it was, to be honest, I thought the royal family brought it on themselves. I mean, I, to I your point, agree. like, just like the second King Charles had anything wrong, we knew instantly what was going on. And there's been no, I mean, other than everybody thought he was dead last week. Um, there's been no like rumors. And so I, I just, yeah, I felt like if they could have warded a lot of this off, they handled it so poorly. So um, poorly. And you which would think is they weird. would have much PR at this point. They but sure did. That's no for sure. Hiding them there. No, nobody's helping them for sure. I did see where they, I don't know if this was a joke or not, but I did see that there was a job posting for a communications person that they were looking for. <laughs> I don't know if it was real, but they weren't paying a lot. And I'm like, well, that's why you're getting this kind of luck because this, right? You need to pay a little more. This could be our problem. <laughs> um, speaking of Kate, let's talk about Meghan Markle. Yeah. Um, yes. The lesser princess, if you will. Um, she has a new I brand. Want her princess. She, she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want to be a princess. No, she does not. Um, she, just wants to be a she has a new lifestyle brand, which I guess is also a line of wine. Did I see? Okay, so I looked it up. It, okay. First, it says the initial report stated it was going to focus on cookbooks in addition to tableware, drinkware like decanters, kitchen linens, edible treats such as jellies, jams, marmalade, and spreads. But there could be much more, including beauty and skincare routines. Of course. Of I course. mean, just cover the gamut. Here's Me. the thing. I feel like at this point, her team is literally just throwing darts at a board. And they're yeah. like, okay, well, we've lost our Netflix deal. We've lost our Spotify deal. So, like, what yeah. else can we do to make some money? And I just don't think, and again, I'm just a commoner that works a normal job, lives in a normal house. <laughs> I'm not going out and buying Nobody. from someone who is completely out of touch with reality. I just, I, I don't can't have afford a, it. I don't have a Meghan Markle tablecloth on my table. No, I, listen, it's going to be like when Joanna Gaines launched her Magnolia line at Target. I thought, oh, well, that would be fun. And then I said, oh, I cannot afford this. It's going to be yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I just, I think you're trying to get into the realm of like Kourtney Kardashian having her line of some poosh luxury things. And who's the blonde that was married to the Coldplay guy? Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Uh, so out of touch, no one is buying your product. So is this gonna land? We'll see. No. Listen, get you like get everything else. Again, but I just uh, to me, it, yeah, it screamed, it screamed desperation. Let me throw the kitchen sink at it, see if anything sticks and lands. And you know, here's what's gonna happen. She'll have some launch party. Oprah will be there. She'll have a few other celebrity friends there. They'll have like one month of sales and then they'll shut yeah. this party down too, like they do everything else. Well, I mean, and the name, what did she name it? American Riviera Orchard. That doesn't sound luxurious. No, and it's also too much. It's too much of a mouthful. It's kind of how I feel about the Torture Poets Department. Like people, it's a lot it's of work. It's like I can see that label on something at TJ Maxx. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> TJ Maxx. The, the thought of Meghan Markle being in TJ Maxx would probably drive her to drink the whole vineyard. I mean, listen. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Um, all right, let's switch gears to sports. Um, wow. We've had some sporting things happen. Let's start with baseball. Um, I'm going to go with Oshtani. Shoei Oshtani. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So he is one of the most famous baseball players right now. And his interpreter this week was busted for um, gambling on sports, which is a no, no. If you listen to new heights, you know, every time they do the segment on picks that right. 
the you intern know, has to do it. No nos are beat into these players. They no. are well. Even there. if you don't speak English, you know this is a no no. Right. You understand the word no no. Yeah. Um, I saw yesterday that he has now hired the same crisis PR firm that Alec Baldwin, Harvey Weinstein, and Hillary Clinton are using, um, which is also the law, law firm that has represented uh, Danny Masterson, Army Hammer, and Prince Andrew. Listen, I just don't think you ever want your name to be in a list with those individuals. No, no. So he claims he claims that he doesn't. He didn't know anything about this to the tune of four point five million dollars coming out of his bank account. He never saw it. He didn't understand it was happening. He didn't. And you know, maybe he makes that much money that he doesn't. I mean, Honestly, though, I feel I just, like. Um, there's there's done a past of, the like just a couple thousand dollar increments here and there, and maybe he doesn't know that. How did your interpreter have access to your bank account? Why? Yeah, like none of this makes sense. And literally, there's footage of the two of them standing in the Dodgers dugout like hours before this news break, where apparently he already had heard that something was happening. And they're standing there like the best of friends laughing. So I'm like, mm. well, and the interpreter story changed. So at first he had said, yes, I have gambling debts. He offered to pay for them for me. But then it comes out that Otani's like, I had no idea. I didn't offer to pay like he stole from me. So mm -hmm. it just, and then part of you also wants to be like, honestly, Otani only knows what this ePay guy is telling him. Mm -hmm. So what if potentially he was telling him, hey, you have to pay this fee for whatever. And he didn't know because he didn't speak the language. So he does have a defense there, I think. But at the same time, I think he'll get off of teams that Otani's in with all the players where they're like, do not gamble. Let's stay away from that. Ipe yeah. was there too. He knew because he's having to interpret, don't gamble. But yeah, I just, I just Otani has a large contract that he just signed, and you don't want to be on the wrong side of that. $700 million for 10 years. Yeah. And it's guaranteed, which is yeah. like, and he usually you'll get like, 680 million because California and taxes. Yeah. I mean, he did a smart Which job, whatever. He's smart about his money. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. The whole thing doesn't smack, uh, pass the smell test for me. I definitely think that there's something amiss, but we'll yeah. see how it plays out. Um, switching gears to the NFL. This past week, we had the coaches meeting down in Orlando. Um, I wish they would have invited us. We could have gone. What if next year they did and we covered it? Ooh. Mm. So you set that may go on the list. Happy. We'll cover everything. Listen, that may go on our, our wish list. Um, I'm here for it. There were some new rules that came out in this meeting. And I got to say, I don't think a one of them is good. I think they're all no. stupid. So here's, here's the here's some of them. I, I can't cover them all, but here's some of them. So this is the only, the first one I have is the only one where I'm like, okay, maybe. So coaches are now going to get a third replay challenge if either of their first two challenges are successful. I mean, I can be okay with that. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think, think it should have been... <laughs> I mean, that's not one I'm going to lose the leap over. I do feel like it should have been both had to be successful, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so the next one is the offense can now be assessed a penalty for a major foul on a play where the offense throws an interception or loses a fumble, even if the foul took place before the possession changed. And oh, that one. And this is the kicker. And even if the defense commits a penalty on the play as well. Like a point of even that. I, do they just like sit around and like let's think of the craziest thing we can think of and make it a rule? Like that's too much. Uh, anyway. Let's just play um, another one is the replay can now be used to overturn a ruling that a quarterback was down or out of bounds before throwing a pass. That one makes sense to me. I could be okay. That one I'm okay with. Um the re I do like this one. The replay can now be used to determine whether the game clock expired before the ball was snapped. I think that makes sense because it happens oh, so like fast. That. Yes. yes. Um, now, here we go. 
hip drop tackles are now banned. Now listen, if you are not familiar with sports and you don't understand what a hip drop tackle is, here's what you need to know. Essentially, if you're on defense, you can no longer tackle a player. That's pretty much all there is. That's pretty much That's what's happening. Cool. <laughs> so to me, have people gotten hurt with hip drop tackles? Yes. Yeah. Have they gotten hurt just running across the field or coming off the sideline like Dre Greenlaw in the Super Bowl? <laughs> yes. It's just part of football. Like, what is this, flag football? Like, Yeah. And even J.J. Watt put out a thing on Twitter that said, you might as well just give us our belts and flags. Yeah. Like, I, just, I don't think anybody gets into football and they're like, I want to be safe. It's a physical game. Like, Injuries happen. Do you want to try well, and prevent them? Sure. But to be able to take away, like, the ability to honestly be a defense, come on. You know, I said to you and Laura the other day in text that I feel like, and this is, this is just my opinion. I mean, clearly I didn't play tackle football. I did play basketball. And anytime you, like, there was a new rule about a different way you had to do something, and you were so consciously trying to make sure you didn't break the rule, I yeah. feel like you put yourself in more danger. And yes. I really, to me, I believe that's what's going to happen with this. Like, so if you don't know what a hip drop tackle is in reality, even though it's pretty much just tackle football, it's basically like if you grab the runner, if you're on defense and you grab the runner with both of your hands or you wrap the runner up with both of your arms, right. or which if that sounds like a tackle to you, you're right, it is. Um, the other part of it is if you pretty much like launch yourself by like throwing your body, I guess, or swiveling your body and dropping your hips or your lower body and landing or like trapping the runner or the receiver's knees, yes. like at their knee or below it. So that's pretty much from my layman's term, what a hip drop tackle is. And now the new penalty is a loss of 15 yards and an automatic first down. That is a lot. Like, okay, if you want to come up with this stupid rule, but like that is, that's big. That could like sway an entire game. I mean, now you're going to have people going at knees and ankles. Which I thought we want, we didn't want to do that either. I mean, right. we like literally can't go with the collar. Now you yeah. can't go with the waist. So we're only, we only got so many options here. <laughs> what are we, what are we going to do? I don't even know. Um, the other one that I think is asinine is the new kickoff rule. Um, it's the XFL really, one. Like, I feel like at this point with the new kickoff rule, they might as well do away with the kickoff. They might as well just, like, start everyone at 20-yard line or something. That's so the new rule. That's one thing. I know. And, like, so the new rule is the kicking team's kicker will kick off from the 35-yard line, but rather than being flanked by his teammates, like, for the sides, right. the rest of the kicking team is going to line up at the opponent's 40 yard line, which eliminates the whole like when they would all take off running. Right. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I think it's going to lead to more like kickoff returns for touchdowns, but like, yeah. Which honestly, I feel like is what they're trying to get at. They're trying to get to where games have higher scores, which we don't need that. We just need a good game. I don't yeah. care what the score is at the end. Yeah, so those are the new rules, but there were also some new bylaws and some new resolutions that should not be ignored. Um, one of the ones that just happened that I think is, I don't know, any, I don't, I don't know yet what I think about it, but the trade deadline has moved. It was at week eight and now it's week nine. So basically that just means you've got one additional week into the season, toward, getting towards the end of the season where you could still do a trade. I don't know that it's really going to be that impactful, but I do think what will come from this, you know, there were all these rumors about McCole Hardman. You know, he was with the Chiefs, got traded to the Jets, and then back to the Chiefs and wins the Super Bowl for the Chiefs. And of course, makes some offhanded remarks about the Jets. And of course, the Jets didn't like that. And so they accused him of a lot of like giving away their stuff to not only the Chiefs, but to the Eagles. But did they and have anything to be given away? Like, what do we, this is how we lose a game? Like, right. I don't know. But I do think the further you get into the season with somebody that's been with the team that long, the more chance you do run of something like that happening. Um, but that's going to be a be, word. Yeah. It's happened. Same thing with coaches when coaches switch teams. 
Yeah. The other one that was um, that came up is that a team can now elevate a quarterback, usually what would be like your third string, your practice squad quarterback, an unlimited number of times to the um, to the real roster to be your emergency quarterback. That would have come into play a few years back when Brock Purdy got hurt with the 49ers. I don't think yeah. that one's a big deal. I mean, it probably just makes sense. I do think that will help some of these like D-list quarterbacks that are out there yeah. that are kind of like jumping from team to team and never get to play. I do think they'll get elevated, so they may make a little more money. But yeah. um, one of the resolutions that I did like, because this annoys me to no end, is now if an injured player is not traveling to an away game, teams have to report that they have been ruled out before they depart for their game. Oh. And I'm sure that, like, that helps NFL teams. It helps me as a fan because if I know that a certain player that I like isn't going to be playing or something, I'm not going out of my way to buy a ticket, you know, things like that. Well, not Um, only that, it just – are I can go ahead and set my expectations and get my anxiety to a level that I know I can maintain. (laughs) Well, and it's going to help us with our fantasy football. That is true. Because I don't need to know Sunday at noon that my tight end's not going to be playing. Yeah. And my other option played on Thursday. Yes. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we those are, I mean, there were some other things, but those were kind of the big ones. Um, I will be excited on New Heights. I hope they do the thing again where they have the picture of the coaches and try to get Travis to identify the coaches. When I saw the updated picture, I was like, oh, please do this on New Heights. Because there was a few that I saw, and I was like, I don't know who they go to. Well, there was a new one. I want to say he was sitting next to Andy Reid. I can't remember. But I was like, who is this good-looking fellow? Like, <laughs> then I think he turns out he's like the new Panthers coach. And I was like, oh, that poor yeah. guy. I go on um, there, and when I can't figure him out. I'll, like, put my hand up to their head to, like, make it look like a head. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of good looking people, I don't know if you saw the news. I guess it happened this morning, may have been last night, that the Chiefs have signed this rugby player. Not Listen, at first I was like, what are we talking about? Not too shit. Yeah. Um, yes, with all due respect to my husband. Oh, like, holy moly, who are you? Dude is yeah. fast as lightning, too. Like he makes Tyreek Hill look slow. And he has good hands. Like in the pro day, like dude can catch the ball. Yeah. I'm pumped. I, I mean, we've seen with Jordan Mylotta, like some of these yeah. rugby guys, they're a good sign. Bring them on. Uh, bring it on, sir. We are and happy to have you. Not being canceled, maybe we'll sure. see some teams that will try and give the Eagles a run for their money on it. This that was kind of the big news too out of the coaches meeting. That was up for debate, were they going to ban the tush push? Um, listen, here's the thing. With Jason Kelsey retired, we don't need to ban it. Nobody's going to be as good at it right. anymore. I mean, no. was there a little glimmer of hope in your mind? Well, first of all, have you listened to New Heights this week? No, I started it, and then I actually had to do my job, so I just have to finish it. That is a bummer. Well, there is a part where Jason says something about how he's super excited to watch. They had the Quan Barkley on this week and um, he was in the studio in LA with Travis and they interviewed him and Jason said he's really excited to like watch the offense with Saquon this year. And Saquon said, well, you know, you don't just have to watch it. And, you know, Travis of course was like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, Jason just laughed it off. But I do just have to wonder if part you know, of him is like, mm. I think he's just one of those dudes that like, yeah, he still wants to play, but he knows he physically can't yeah. do it. So it's going to be hard, at least this first season. Yeah. But there are rumors that every major media outlet is going after Jason Kelsey mm-hmm. with everything they've got to try and get him to sign a contract with them. Yeah. He, Dude's going to be, he's, he's going to be making money. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to be so good at it. Like, I think he is going to be phenomenal at it. Um, I guess, like, the most pressing rumor is that he allegedly may replace RG3, um, which I told you and Laura this week, I truly believe whatever he signs um, will only be a one-year deal. Um, Yeah. Even if they don't make that public, because I – 
firmly, firmly, firmly believe that he and Travis will have a show like Peyton and Eli. And as much as I don't want it to be true, I do think this is Travis's well, last year. This year we get uh, Tom Brady as an analyst. So we'll see how that Pricey goes. Take, I, Pricey Take, I think he's going to suck. Oh, I don't think he's going to be great at this. No. I, and I also don't think he'll do it long because I think he's going to be like, I hate this. Yeah. I just don't think he would enjoy it. No. It takes, there are certain, when I have an analyst, like I want it to be somebody that's fun, that knows what they're talking about, that can see both sides. And mm-hmm. some of these people are either way too old to still be doing it and mm-hmm. out of the locker room too long. Like they just don't have the pulse point on what's going on. But then you also have some of these players that just, I don't think they would be entertaining to listen to. Yeah. Not at and all. have to like banter back and forth with whoever else you're on the screen with. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't see that working, but um, I cannot wait for, well, it's like it's a double edged sword. It's a double edged sword. I can't wait for Travis and Jason to have a show commentating a game, yeah. but then I don't want to lose Travis to the game too. I but know. I know. Either way, we still get to look at him. So I'm happy. Um, and so well, there's, Four weeks out from the draft. So we are about to yes. get a little bit more football stuff just to hold this Which, over. Which thankfully, yeah, because so we got four weeks to the draft and then we kind of have a lull until they report for summer. Um, but I, and I think, you know, free agency has slowed down a lot. Um, you know, there's rumors that the Dolphins have offered um, Odell Beckham. Fine. Y'all can have him. We don't care. Right. Please. Um yeah, keep that out of Kansas City. But um, I also think it's weird if that's true and he's willing to take it. Why hasn't he? I also think he has a way inflated sense of self-worth and probably thinks he's worth more than anyone's offering and it ain't going to happen. Which I don't think um, that mentality fits with the Chiefs. Those guys no. want to play and enjoy it. I mean, you've got Travis Kelsey, who arguably is one of the most famous NFL players right now but is mm-hmm. seemingly so down to earth about it that I just don't think somebody with OBJ coming in, I just don't think that uh-uh. mentality and personality is going to mesh well in the rooms. I don't think they even have looked at him, nor will they. Um, I could be wrong, but I just, especially now that they got Hollywood Brown, who seems yeah. to really fit their like club or I just, yeah, I don't see it. Um, we'll have the draft, but then, you know, when they report for summer training, a lot of contracts, flip at that point. So there's going to be several more things, bigger name things that happen probably. One big name thing that I did see yesterday is that the Cowboys and Dak did not come to an agreement. Um, no. So he will be a free agent at the end of the season. And it makes you wonder if he's ready to get out too. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I don't think anybody can figure out what the Cowboys are doing because I don't think they can figure out what no. they're doing. Um, you know, Jerry first said we're all in and now he said, we're just going to try to do more with less. Like, what are we doing here, sir? Like, right. yeah, I don't know. They I'm, can very easily re-sign him. At, what positions they call for at the draft on their first few picks. Cause what are you doing? What are you trying to build here? They're going to have to get a running back. I mean, they got rid of Tony Pollard and then they didn't even call Derrick Henry who wanted to come there. Yeah. Doesn't it doesn't make any yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Just let us help you. Yeah. I mean, hey, we'll add that to the list. If y'all need this, just call it. Um, I think that's all I had on the NFL. So we're going to introduce a new segment. We're not quite sure what we're going to call it yet. Maybe why this or why, why, why or why not? I don't even know what we're going to call it. We don't know. But we're going to tell you like one thing that we really are loving right now and why, and then one thing we're not so much loving and why not. Yes. Um, Becca, give me your why. Give me your why, your good one first. Okay. So my why, what I'm loving right now, the masked singer. Do you watch (laughs) that show on Fox? I do not, but okay. So we know that I just can't keep up with a lot of shows. That's not something it's overwhelming. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the mass thing here, we're on season 11. I've watched it every season and every episode. And it's so. Every episode? Every episode. We record it because Wednesdays I always have to take Ryder to like youth group at church. So when I get home late, 
That's what we watch as we're winding down for the night. Okay. It's, now it started, there's sometimes there's huge celebrities. Sometimes there's celebrities that you're like, I literally have never heard of you, but you seem very famous. There's some that it's easy. Like they give you clues beforehand and then you try and figure it out with the clues based on the voice. Cause they're in these like immaculate costumes. So mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out like, are you short in there? Are you tall? How big is the head that you have on? I love it. I love it so okay. much. It's okay. so good. So good. <laughs> All right. Well, I would have never guessed there was any show you have seen every single episode of. That and Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh, Lord. Talk about a lifetime commitment. Good grief. You, this is why I can't pick up new shows. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Um, okay. So I'll give you my, what I'm loving and why right now. Okay. Um, it's actually because of TikTok and it's actually a show. So I have never seen this show, nor do I know what it came on or anything. Okay. Um, I only am watching the show through TikTok, the person that's posting clips. So I probably need to do a lot more research, but I am loving what I know so far. <laughs> um, so it's called, I'm pretty sure it's called The Affair. And the only person's name that I know is Joshua Jackson. Okay. I feel like I've seen some of these clips on TikTok. Oh my God. It's so good and so addicting. So there is an author. His name is Noah Soloway. And this is like upstate New York, like Montauk kind of area. Um, he's married. They've got kids. Been married a long time. Several decades. Not several decades. Why do I keep doing that today with decades and centuries? <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, probably like 20 years. So maybe two decades. Um he ends up having an affair with a much younger woman who is really mentally unstable, but you kind of figure that out as the show goes on. Mm -hmm. So he and the wife get divorced. He ends up marrying the, the mistress, okay. but she has this whole past back in her hometown, which her ex-husband is Joshua Jackson, who I do love. Um, and he looks very handsome in the show. Okay. And there's like a whole thing. There's a, baby involved that like you figure out somebody else is the father and there's some murders there's some crime cover-ups there's a lot of mental health issues um but it is fantastic again i don't know what this originally aired on i don't know if it's still on the air i don't know anything other than what i have just told you but let me tell you i'm not even confident it's called the affair but i think it is um but i'm a huge fan it looks like it's on Showtime. That feels fitting. Now, I will say, I mean, there's a couple scenes where you're like, oh, dear. I mean, you definitely don't want your children watching it. But it's not like, I don't feel like I'm watching porn or anything by any means. It's definitely way more dialogue than, you know, issues. So that's my thing right now. I love it. Okay. Well, there um, what is, what are you not liking right now and why? So what I'm not liking right now is... AI generated anything. It throws us off. I can't. Is it because of me? Is it because of me? <laughs> you, Kate Middleton. <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. I know. All these things that come out, and then you and I are having to like text back and forth, be like, that's AI. That's not really like the things they can do with the videos. I think I sent you a video clip from Twitter, and it was like Kate Middleton's video where she announces her medical issues but they put Meghan Markle's face on it and it looked like Meghan talking. And I'm like, I, yeah, listen, the it's world is freaking. crazy. Enough. We're trying to figure so many things out. Please don't throw the fake stuff at us as well. Yeah. I, need it to <laughs> I am not sure that a day has gone by in the history of our friendship that I have not sent something that in the end you've told me, Oh, that's a, <laughs> And let me tell you, it's stuff that can get me real worked up. And so, like, if you don't respond yeah. immediately, I am 18 miles down the rabbit hole, all kinds of distress. I've probably told Aaron. I may have even told Judd. I mean, remember that day that they convinced me that um, Chris Jones signed and I told Judd with tears of joy out of his eyes? It turned out it wasn't even real yet. I oh, do. man. God, it is just <laughs> Well, I love that technology is advanced. It's great in the medical field. Please don't do this to us in pop culture. Yes. <laughs> yes. Y'all don't know what you do to us. And unless you're going to pay for my, my therapy bills. Okay. That's right. all I'm asking. Um, 
therapy. I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> that may be one of the leading reasons that we try not to be speculative on this show because at the end it won't be true anyway. <laughs> We're just we try to be respectful <laughs> and honest. So. Right. God, okay, um, what I'm not loving right now. So what I'm not loving right now are online fat shamers. Yeah. So you haven't watched New Heights this week yet. Um, but I see a clip on this though. So I guess this is kind of creeping where I normally don't creep, but there were some pictures that came out this week from the paparazzi of Taylor and Travis in uh, a location, uh, you know, tropical location, which, you know, if you're in the ocean, you typically wear a swimming suit, um, which both of them are. And there were fat chambers on both sides. I mean, <laughs> y'all, listen. I wish I looked I like just, that. Please call me fat. <laughs> listen, please call me fat if I look like that, either one of them. Yeah. But I think, you know, they fat shame, they've been fat shaming Travis for a while, keep calling the dude fat. And I'm like, First of all, you're an NFL player. Like, you better be bigger. But second of all, like, he's not fat. Um, he did not mention it word for word on the show this week, but he definitely made several comments about it. And he did talk about, like, it's March. Like, I'm not supposed to be in shape what? until September. Like, you know, like, so he didn't, like, necessarily yeah. call it out. Like, hey, I was in my swimming trunks with my girlfriend and y'all were calling me fat. He didn't do that. But it was obvious he had seen what had happened, which, you know, a lot of times when we think about like the, the crime of fat shaming, we think about women, um, probably because we are women, but usually typically that's where you see it most. But I mean, guys can get affected by that stuff too. And I could see him definitely being somebody that that would hurt his feelings. Um, they also made comments about Taylor, which y'all. <laughs> right. Listen, Come on. I mean, you can dislike Taylor all day long. There ain't nothing fat about her right now in that bikini. There's yeah. just not. Um, but I was telling you that I saw um, some speculation that it's always commented on and she plays it up a lot when she's photographed, especially if she knows like people are taking pictures. She always has a drink in her hand and it's just kind of become a joke. She plays it up. So that's not like speculative. But I saw a thing this week that I told you, and I think there's probably a lot of truth to it. She may allegedly be doing that on purpose so that people will not instantly say that she's pregnant because it did used to be a big thing specifically in her last relationship constant speculation that she was pregnant um the there was speculation was this week even with even with the drink in her hand in the ocean there was still speculation this week that she looked pregnant and i was like honey that i would pregnant. have killed to look pregnant if that's what right. it was listen I was well, she didn't no even look like she had gas. Yeah. She didn't even look like she had a gas bubble. I was like, "What is wrong with you people?" Yeah. So I'm just over it. Like, listen, you guys, if you want to speculate about people's personal lives and do all that stuff, it's it's a hard trap to fall into. We do it, even though we don't want to. We don't put it on the show, but like, I get well, it. But that, like, that's come cool. on. So you're like, maybe think it, don't say it. Are we honestly still in the day and age where people are fat shaming? Like, it's just wild to me. Do you think that everyone walks around with like a six pack and their body's oiled up and they look like they just stepped out of like Maxim magazine or something? Like, I it, I don't get it. I don't. I, well, I, mean, I, I guess that's kind of where I was when I saw those pictures. I mean, the instant I saw the pictures, first of all, I was, I mean, candidly, I was happy to see them because right. I just love I'm seeing scared. happiness. <laughs> They're my favorite couple. So I'm happy for that. Um, did I wish that the paparazzi wouldn't have done that? I mean, sure. Do I think that's probably planned? Yes, but whatever. Um, I knew instantly the second I saw it, I was like, oh, they're going to call her fat. And not because I thought she looked at it at all. In fact, I thought she looked stunning. Um, yeah. I literally looked at her legs, which I have noticed so much during the heiress tour and thought, I mean, I know what it takes. She has said what her workout routine is. She performs that entire show on a treadmill, three and a half hours. Y'all, I can barely do 30 minutes without like dry heaving. <laughs> so like, like, I think we're done. We're good. <laughs> listen, the fact that her legs, I mean, they are stunning. I mean, just ripped. But I instantly was like, oh, they're going to fat shame her. And, you know, she probably thought that too. And what a horrible feeling. Like, 
But the thing that really kills me is like people that are live their life. And I mean, listen, itty bitty tiny bikini, like I'd have been in a full cover up. Listen, I just can't even imagine. <laughs> Turtleneck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I probably would have like peeked <laughs> over the top of the boat, like, hello. <laughs> um, but also like so fat shamers, but also like just as a caveat to this, people that when I see you on Twitter fat shaming her, and I see how much of a fan you claim to be on Twitter, you yeah. are Y'all are despicable. That's just, that's all yeah. I can say. Yeah, I would agree. I think that's a great, why not? Thank you. Thank you. So that's our new segment. Every week we're going to talk about something we're loving and why and something we're hating and why. We don't know what we're going to call it yet. If you have suggestions, let us know. Um, but yeah, anything that we didn't cover that we should? I think we hit it all. I'm sure there's going to be more breaking news this week. So God, my phone that. is flipped over right now. So who knows what Twitter has told me yet? We'll see. <laughs> Gosh. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to y'all later. Have a great Bye. Easter weekend. Yes. Bye. Y'all.